In this segment, we'll provide an overview of the SQL Century console, focusing on the All Devices Global Calendar View and Event Manager. First, let's take a look at the Navigator pane, where we can see a list of all the servers I'm watching with Event Manager, or Performance Advisor. Uh, notice the SQL Servers node automatically reflects any SQL Server groups or servers registered on this machine local to Management Studio. The Devices node shows all connections by physical device, including those external to SQL Server, like Oracle databases, uh, SharePoint servers, as well as Windows task schedulers. I'll expand one of my servers here to walk through what types of SQL Server objects the Event Manager can monitor. Uh, SQL Agent Jobs, SQL Agent Alerts, uh, event Manager can provide step-level details for DTS packages natively in SQL 2000 as well as legacy packages for upgraded servers. And this is in addition to SSIS packages in SQL Server 2005 and above. SQL Century can also watch reporting services reports and respond to their conditions just like a SQL agent job. Uh, additionally, SQL agent jobs that are created to schedule reports are given a GUID within the native tools for the job name that can make it difficult for the DBA to tell what schedule the job runs. In the Navigator pane in the SQL Century console here, uh, we can see the job with a friendly name, which makes it a lot easier to identify what reports are going to be generated by which jobs. Beyond SQL Server, Event Manager supports monitoring SharePoint timer jobs. For the first time, you get visibility to all the automated activity in SharePoint. Oracle 9i through 11g databases are supported. Uh, this allows you to integrate Oracle scheduler jobs, backup jobs, DBMS jobs into your existing SQL Century Event Manager calendar. And much of the functionality SQL Century provides for SQL Server jobs is available for Oracle jobs, such as notifications, cross-server chaining, and more. Uh, SQL Sentry also supports Windows Task Scheduler. Now, even though these objects are external to SQL Server, in many environments, SQL Server jobs have dependencies on Windows Tasks, and SQL Sentry's event chaining can be used to manage those dependencies. Next, we have the All Devices Global Calendar. A typical day for a DBA usually involves first thing to need to determine what's failed and what's been running long while I was away. The Event Manager Global Calendar provides that information in one place, giving the DBA a vision across their entire enterprise. Any event that occurred on any server watched by Event Manager will appear on the calendar. Uh, we can even filter to show only failures or long-running events. Any calendar view can be filtered, not just the global calendar view. So here, if I go down to the Event View tab, uh, you can see I've defined uh, long running in this case as anything that's run longer than four minutes. All these filter settings can be customized for any calendar view. So each box on the calendar here represents an event that's occurred on any of the servers that I'm watching. And with each box here, you see we have a glyph that indicates the type of object. We have the actual start time along with the server where it ran and the name of the object. Uh, notice with each event here we have green or red status bar that tell us success or failure for the event. The uh, Next to the status bar is the blue duration bar, which corresponds to the time ruler running down the left-hand side here. Now that I've identified a failed job with the red status bar here, what do I need to do to figure out why it failed? Well, a single click gives me a pop-up tooltip with all the runtime details, including the start and end time, duration, including percentage of average duration. I have the last step output, which typically includes the actual error message for the failure. Notice at the bottom that anyone can pin notes to these events on the calendar here. Uh, to leave a note, you just right click on the event and go to the Add Edit Notes menu item. Notice when I clicked on this job that two other events were highlighted too. In this case, we have a top SQL statement and a deadlock uh, detected by Performance Advisor in this case that were related to this job's execution. I can go to the Highlight menu again by right-clicking to determine how different types of events are related in the calendar view. Uh, which options are available depend on the type of event that I've right-clicked on here. For DTS packages, SSIS packages, or even just multi-step jobs, more information is available. Uh, notice when I mouse over the lower right-hand 
corner of this job, which is a maintenance plan job that kicks off an SSIS package, it darkens. And a single click gives me a call out. First of all, the step details for this job. So I can see the individual steps start and end times, individual status bars for step success and failure, step text output, and then because I know this is a step that kicked off an SSIS package, I can drill further down and see any start or end messages and error or warnings that were generated by the package itself right here with just another couple clicks of the mouse. So this has been a brief overview of the SQL Sentry Event Manager Global Calendar View. Calendar views are available for any server or group of servers and that can even be customized to show particular types of events across your enterprise in one view. If you have any technical questions or would like to place an order, please don't hesitate to contact us.